Selling is an art, the art of persuasion. It's not something you're born with, it's something you learn. Knowing how to persuade others makes us more effective in every phase of our lives. Yet so few of us ever take the time to learn the basics of persuasion that can make us more successful. If you're a parent, you need to know the art of persuasion with your children. If you want to get ahead on the job, you need to know the art of persuasion with your boss. And certainly, if you're a professional salesperson, knowing the art of persuasion is absolutely vital for your economic success. Here's Tom Hopkins, America's leading authority on the art of persuasion and salesmanship. His best-selling book, How to Master the Art of Selling, has sold over a half million copies and been translated into five languages. Over one million people have attended his sales seminars throughout the world. Stay tuned now. For the next 90 minutes, America's master sales trainer will teach you techniques that will make you more effective in the art of persuasion. Get a pencil and paper and take notes. By the time this program is over, you'll have the tools to be more successful as you learn how to master the art of selling anything. And now, ladies and gentlemen, here he is, Tom Hopkins. Thank you. Thank you. As I start with you, I would like to have you consider me a teacher. You know, there's many people that are motivators, and there's a lot of people that teach goal setting, and all that's important, but I like to be considered a teacher because my goal is to teach you some ideas that you can walk out of this room and apply immediately to increase your effectiveness in life. Now, as I start with you, you must realize a basic truth. Your mind at this moment is functioning six times faster than my mouth. That means as I speak, you have the ability to listen, to record the data, to assimilate, six times faster than the words are coming into your ear. Now because of that, there's what we call lag time. It's easy to leave, it's easy to think about something else, think about a problem you're having. So I'll be using a technique to keep you mentally with me throughout the program. It was developed centuries ago by a man named Socrates. Socrates developed what we call today the Socratic method of teaching, which is the teaching through the use of questions. And I'll be asking you questions all during the program to keep you mentally stimulated and with me. Now, let's begin by asking you the first question. Now, because some of you may have a low threshold for rejection, I'm going to give you the first answer. The first answer is common ground. Ready for the question? When you meet another human being, you try to get yourself out of the way and you want to establish a rapport and, well, you really start searching to make sure you both have a little... Oh, well, it's not bad. 98% of you got it, which is okay. Let's try it one more time. Ready? When you meet someone and you're trying to persuade them to do anything, there's a defense barrier they put up. You must build a foundation where they truly feel that you both have a little... Let's see if we have some common ground. How many of you are attending this session with a desire to learn ideas to increase your income and, of course, earn more money? Can I see your hands? Oh, good. We have a little? Because if you came to learn it, I'm here to teach it. We have some. How many of you in your life, think back now, how many of you ever had, at any point in your life, too much month at the end of your money? We have a little more. You see, I started off and broke my father's heart when I was very young because he had a dream like most of us have as parents. He wanted me to go to college, get the degree, and become a success. He dreamed that I would be a famous attorney. Well, my father and mother saved from a very average income so I could go to college. I went to college, and I only lasted 90 days, three months. I came home, and I'll never forget. Dad was in the living room. I walked in. I said, I'm home. He said, what are you doing home? It's midterm. I says, I quit. He says, you quit? Your mother and I saved for 15 years so you could be a success, and you quit? I said, Dad, I don't want to go to college, and I don't want to be an attorney. And I'd never seen him to that point in my life cry. And with tears in his eyes, he said, son, your mother and I will always love you even though you will never amount to anything. 
Now that was my first motivational talk. <laughs> and you know what I'm learning? At that moment I had something to prove and I'm finding those people that achieve the highest degree of accomplishment and wealth, they have something to prove to somebody. Be it themselves, be it a relative. I walked out of that room at 17 years of age and I had something to prove. And I said, what can I do with a 90-day college education? <laughs> my uncle heard of my plight and got me a job in construction. I became an iron worker. For you that don't know what an iron worker is, it's the hardest physical labor there is. I started carrying steel on bridge decks. Number 11 bar, inch and three-eighths steel, much uh, bigger than this. They weigh 208 pounds each. My job with two other men was to throw these bars on my shoulder and walk up and down a ramp. Now, I did that for a year. And one morning, I woke up. I said, I've got to do something else with my life. <laughs> I was six foot two the day I took that job. And I said, I've got to do something else. So what am I going to do? Well, I was now 18. I thought I would get into sales. And you know, I didn't do well in sales. I had a very low self-image. I was afraid of people. I was timid. But luckily, I started searching. And today's program, the short time we're together, the tip of the iceberg of our entire training, is years of research from many people that helped me at the start in my life when I was ready and, and literally helped me through change. How many of you will accept this truth? No one can change another human being unless they're ready for the change. We accept it? Say, that's so true. No one can change anyone else. All we can do is affect change. And believe me, when I started my search, broke, depressed, alone, I was ready. And luckily, the teachers came into my life. I've also found that to be true. That when you're ready with an idea, a concept, a new product, when you're ready, the right people seem to appear if your attitude is right and everything is right. Well, I was ready, and luckily the search started. And you know, I've really found in my life that regardless of what you do, there's basically three things necessary to be, quote, successful. And of course, that depends on what your goals are when we talk about success. But if you look at this little diagram here, and let's say we just put success on the top of this little triangle, and we say, well, success to me is this. In fact, watch this. I think, I think you, you'll find this to be rather interesting. Just give me a word or two what you consider success, would you? Lots of money. Okay, lots of money. How about you? Security. Okay, security is very important. What would you say, ma'am? Financial independence. Financial independence. You know, if we asked a thousand people what success is, guess how many different answers we'd probably get? About a thousand. That's why success is an individual thing. To me, success is the continuous journey towards the achievement of predetermined worthwhile goals, which depends on what you want for you. But I've found there's three areas you have to cover. You definitely need what I call product knowledge. You've got to know your product or your career goals. There's no doubt about that. You can have all the enthusiasm in the world, but if you don't know your product or service or your idea, your concept, you also don't need what we're going to be talking a lot about today. I call it PPS. PPS is people, persuasion, skills. That is the ability to meet someone, establish a rapport, qualify them, and of course, eventually persuade them to your way of thinking. And, of course, you've got to build this whole thing on one word, attitude, attitude. So you've got to have all three, as we're going to be discussing in our program. Let's start off realizing that we're all made up basically the same, but have tremendous differences as to our characteristics, our quality. We recently surveyed a group of people that came here to Phoenix to take the entire three-day seminar live. And we found those people that left the program and went out and had the greatest results, they all had certain very similar qualities. The first quality they all seemed to have 
is they are first and foremost highly goal oriented. They have goals. You know, we all talk about goals. Oh yes, I want to set some goals. Most people have dreams. They have wishes. They don't have goals. How many of you will agree with this statement? The average American spends more time planning the details of their two-week vacation than they plan the, spend planning the details of their life. How many of you agree with me on that? Isn't that sad? That's why when, when I started designing this, which we call my life's blueprint, I literally said, how can a family, not just an individual, a family, sit down and look at the next 20 years as to what they'll be doing, what they'll be owning, what they'll be having in their life. One year of research, because I found most people don't really know what the goal should be, or you know what? They find it's easy to achieve goals, it's just very difficult to what? Set them, clearly define them. And then of course, ardently desire them, vividly imagine them, and commit to them. So I guess I can start off by saying, if you're gonna apply all the techniques in the home study course, you have to literally say, I'm now going to sit down and take the time to outline my goals. What do I want for me? The second thing, the second quality I find in the top people we've trained, and listen to this, ready? They do what they plan to do daily, meaning they organize and plan their time. You see, all of us have been given 86,400 seconds in a day. They tick by, we can never have them back. And you know, successful people don't put in more time, they get more productivity out of every moment because they have the discipline to follow an organizational system. Now that was one of my problems. I didn't like a lot of paperwork. How many of you in the room have a real problem with paperwork follow-up? Come on, let me see your hands. A lot of us do, especially you that, that are in the field of sales already. Golly. I used to just really dislike it. I made it simple. I, I developed a one-page little situation that I could just carry this with me in every day. And I ask a lot of, I can tell you the hundreds of thousands of people I've said, just on one page, write down the six most important things you must do each day. Don't try to write everything down. Six most important things. If you only do those in order to priority, you'll be amazed at what happens. See, many people wake up and they're not sure what they're going to do that day or they do what they want to do instead of what they should do. So time planning is absolutely critical if you're going to fulfill your potential. The third thing we find is, and I want to congratulate you that are joining us at this program, they invest monthly in the greatest investment on earth. Guess what it is? Their mind. Your mind is the greatest investment on earth. And you know, everyone looks outside of themselves. I want change, I want a nicer home, I want a nicer car. You have been given the most powerful computer on earth. It's there at your disposal to use. But most people don't use it. They don't fill it. That's why I congratulate you. I find those people that are successful realize the importance of investing in their mind. And I recently did a program for a major automobile company and I jumped in, and this is a highly paid executive, and I jumped in his car, and he was taking us to the studio for the shooting of a video disc, and I looked over, and there in the dash, of course, was a cassette player. I pulled it out. There was a motivational tape. Now, here's a highly successful executive. I said, do you listen to this stuff much? He says, I've got to motivate all the people underneath me so I know I need to start my day that way, too. Isn't it amazing the people that need training and help most are the ones that refuse to go after it? So sad. So I thank you. I congratulate you. But you know what? The greatest difference we find between average and great in the art of persuasion, regardless of your vocation, is that the top people are daily students of persuasion technique. You see, that's really what we're going to just skim today is the art of persuasion. And a lot of people see, they, they, they go, oh, that, that's pushy, that, that, that's obnoxious. No, no. It is very nice. It's not offensive. But it is very powerful if you apply it properly in all areas of your life. Not just in your business, 
This is in your personal life, with your children, your spouse. So let's start off with a basic concept. If I say it, you'll tend to doubt it. If you say it, it's true. And that's why the first art of persuasion is to learn to ask all the right questions. And if you learn nothing from this short time we're together but the art of question, you will quadruple your effectiveness because you'll quit telling and start asking. It's the whole key. It's just like your children. You tell them to clean the room up, there's a tendency to fight it. You tell your spouse what they better do, there's a tendency to fight it. You that are employers trying to get your subordinates to do what they should do for higher productivity to the firm, you tell them they fight it. The key is to say, how can I avoid telling them and how can I start asking them? Now be very careful if you start asking people questions. They should normally know the answer. And that's one of the problems in high technology we find. Where we're working with a company involving computers or in word processors, copiers, high technology. And some of these people aren't technicians. They have spent years learning the bits, the bytes, the megabytes, the floppy disks, and all the fun technology. And they love to impress the people they're talking to with their knowledge. But see, if I ask you questions you can't answer, how do you feel? stupid. And right away I'm threatened by you. So they should normally know the answer. Now, another thing, the answer should normally confirm they're going ahead. See, I had one person leave the seminar and says, I'm just going to start asking everyone questions. Tom says, just ask questions. And a couple came into his office and he walked up and said, hello, ma'am, you look great, new girdle. <laughs> Wrong question. You have to ask the right question. Now, let me show you an example of this, okay? Um, what is your name? Rosemary McGowan. Rosemary. Uh, to increase the learning experience and the enjoyment of the group, you probably wouldn't mind helping me, would you? Not at all. Nice of you to offer, Rosemary. Mm -hmm. Would you give your book to this nice lady? And would you escort me up here on the stage? And if you would, just have a seat right here on this chair and relax. Now, I didn't let any of you in the room know that at exactly this moment, a woman would be sitting on this chair. Now, why didn't I let anybody know? And I'd like you all to say the word fear. It would have created too much fear. Some of the ladies in the room in the front might have said, no way, I'm going to the restroom. <laughs> Many times when you're moving into a persuasion technique or you're trying to sell yourself or ideas, you don't do it properly, it can create too much what? Yeah. What's the main thing we have to control in moving people to any type of decision? Their fear. Well, I made a decision as to the woman I'd bring up here, and then I went down and just asked her the right question. You notice she knew the answer. What's the first question I asked her? What her name is. She had that down pat. <laughs> Rosemary? Then I said, listen to the words. I said, to increase the learning experience and the enjoyment of the group, you probably wouldn't mind helping me, would you? She said no, which meant what? Yes, and here she sits. I moved her, you see. That's persuasion through the use of what? Question. Now, would you, sir, do me a favor? And right here, just write down one of the 52 cards in a deck of cards, and don't make it an eight, or they'll think we're working together. Okay, good, cover that up, won't you? Now, Rosemary, you've played cards once or twice, haven't you? Yes, I have. If I'm not mistaken, there's 52 cards in the deck, isn't that right? That's right. Of the 52 cards, we have two colors. We have red or we have black. Would you name either red or black? Black. And that would leave us then with the red, wouldn't it? That's right. Now, on the red, we have two types. We have hearts, we have diamonds. Would you name either heart or diamond? Heart. That's right. Now, in the heart, <laughs> we have two types. We have face or we have number. Would you name either face or number? Number. That's right. Now, in the number, we have two types. We have odd, we have even. Would you name either odd or even? Even. That's right. Now, in the even, we have two types. We have low or we have high. We'll make the low 246, the high the 8 to 10. Would you name low or high? High. 
That would then leave us with the low, wouldn't it? That's correct. So we boiled it down to the two of the four of the six of hearts. Would you name the two of the four of the six of hearts? The six. I think you found it. I would never push you to it. We don't believe in being pushy. Let's see what this gentleman here wrote down. What'd you write down, sir? The six of hearts. Didn't she do nicely? Whoa. Now, please realize I'm not doing this to teach you a card trick. It is the premise of persuasion. First of all, you can't lead people to a decision till you know all the options. You that are involved in marketing a product, you can't choose the right product unless you know that product. And not only the product, the options, the competition. I couldn't do this in front of all of you unless I knew all of the cards. I didn't choose it. This gentleman, a stranger, came into the room today. He chose the card. I led her through the use of? She knew all the? But every answer she gave, I knew how to make it an answer that confirmed she was going. Now let's do it one more time so you see the philosophy in this. Would you look over there for a second? We're going to choose this card. You can all see it. And we're going to make it this time one of these. <laughs> OK, you all got it? Now let's follow the philosophy. Ready? You've played cards once or twice, haven't you? Now repeat that after me. Go. You've played cards once or twice, haven't you? Yes, I have. If I'm not mistaken, there's 52 in the deck. Isn't that right? If I'm not mistaken, there's 52 in the deck. Isn't that right? That's right. Of the 52, we have two colors, red or black. Would you name red or black? Of the 52, we have two colors, red or black. Would you name red or black? Red. We want red, so let's all say, that's right. She said black, we'd have to say, then that leaves the red, doesn't it? That's right. Now we got her into the red. <laughs> In the red, we have two types, hearts or diamonds. Would you name hearts or diamonds? Diamonds. That's right. She said hearts, we'd have to say, that leaves the diamonds, doesn't it? That's right. In the diamonds, we have two types, face or number. Would you name face or number? Face. That leaves the numbers, doesn't it? That's right. In the numbers, we have two types, odd or even. Would you name odd or even? Even. That leaves the odd, doesn't it? That's right. In the odd, we have two types, low or high. Would you name low or high? High. That leaves the low, doesn't it? That's right. We boil it down to the three or five of diamonds. Would you name the three or the five of diamonds? The five. That leaves the three, doesn't it? That's right. And we hope you'll enjoy it for many years. <laughs> Give her a nice hand. Wasn't that nice? Great. Now, please realize that's not taught to teach a card trick. It is a premise. You can't lead anyone to the decision you want to lead them to till you know all the options and you've rehearsed how the questions will lead them to the final decision, which is accepting your offering, your product, your service, your idea, or doing what you want them to do. Not pushy, pulling. Do you know the difference between pushy and pulling? If you tell them, you're, if you ask them and lead them, you're pulling. And the most successful persuaders on earth are extremely pulling. Let me give you five of the over 50 strategies involved in the home study course. And there are over 50 strategies of persuading people to your way of thinking. I, in our short time, want to cover five. The first one, fabulous little persuasion technique. It's called the alternate advance question. Now, the alternate advance question is a question with two answers. Either answer is a minor agreement leading towards the major decision. You see, a professional persuader always asks people questions with two answers. Now, later, here, there, one o'clock, three o'clock, my place, yours. <laughs> this is the alternate advance, isn't it? For example, to your children. Bobby, would you like to clean your room up now or after you play an hour? Either answer, what's the commitment they're making? To clean it up. In setting an appointment, please, if you want to get busy in business, you act busy. If you act busy, you get busy. I call it fake it till you make it. <laughs>
never say, when can we get together? They'll say, I'm too busy. That's why a professional says, I have an appointment opening at 1 this afternoon or at 2.45 tomorrow will be more convenient. Either choice, you have an appointment. You see, you can use these constantly. I have, I have three children. I have two daughters, Tasha and Lara. I don't know how many of you ever saw Dr. Shivago, any of you? Yeah, we saw it twice. <laughs> <laughs> and I have a son, Tim. These, these three children of mine have been around the art of persuasion ever since they were born. And they use it constantly. I walked into a store years ago. Tasha was just a little tyke. And he walked in and she looked at me and said, Daddy, what should I have today, a fudgesicle or a popsicle? <laughs> Either answer, what's she getting? Ice cream. You see how the technique works? Now, the second of over 50 is what I call the tie-down. And many of you have heard me teach this. It's a beautiful little yes momentum builder. See, the definition of the tie-down is a question at the end of a statement that demands a yes response. Now, already in this program, I've used quite a few, haven't I? That was one, wasn't it? They're fun, aren't they? It just takes practice, doesn't it? Yeah. You see, isn't it, doesn't it, wasn't it, couldn't it, wouldn't it, shouldn't it, don't you agree? As you stated, can't you, won't you, haven't you, hasn't he, hasn't she? That's the little tie-down, isn't it? Now, let's you and I do some together and join right in with us. And, and the key is to give a little nod when you're using the technique. Ready? Let's try it. A reputation for professionalism is important, isn't it? Good. That was one, wasn't it? We did it again didn't we? You're catching on, aren't you? In time, it will become a reflex, won't it? You see, and don't overuse it. Now, I teach this to students, and they want to go out, and everyone they meet, they want, isn't it, doesn't it, wasn't it, couldn't it? <laughs> Never overuse the persuasion technique, only when you need them. Only when you need them. This is a fun one, though. It builds the yes momentum. And one thing I've learned over the years in persuasion, the minor yeses literally carry the major decision, don't they? Let's look at number three of over 50. The third is what I call the involvement question. Now, we all know what involvement means. You get involved with someone. The involvement question is a question you ask the buyer of your product, your prospect, whoever you're persuading. It's a question you ask them. They'll have to ask themselves after they own the product. Do you see why it's an involvement question? See, most top persuaders assume they're going to accomplish their goal. They go in to meet a prospect. They assume the sale will take place. You must start with that, the assumption this will happen. But then you have to ask them questions they have to ask themselves after they make the decision. Just like hypothetically, let's say you, you, uh, you that are in the high technology field, let's say that you are marketing a, a computer. You might walk in and say, Mr. Johnson, as we prepare for the presentation, who would you like to have trained in the company to use the computer? One of your staff or all of them? When must he decide who is trained? After it's in the company. You in real estate, gosh, walk out in the backyard and say, would you do the landscaping yourself or have it done? When must they decide who mows? When they move in. So this is why we call it the involvement question. Now, never forget this. No one buys anything logically. They buy it emotionally and then defend the purchase logically. Oh, yes, oh, yes, oh, yes. We are constantly building emotions in people. That's how you persuade them. Not logically, emotionally. Then after the persuasion is over, they'll logically sit down and figure out why they did it. Oh, yes. The next technique, one of my very favorites, is what I call the feedback. Now, the, the feedback question, and let me give you the definition of it. It's taking a minor objection and warmly feeding it back in the form of a question. In other words, when I say an objection, you're telling me a reason you can't go ahead with me. You're saying, I don't want to for this reason. 
My goal is to feed back your objections so you elaborate on it. And in elaborating on it, I find where I can overcome the objection. For example, your children all use one word. They have one word as a child we use as the feedback. You tell them they can't do something and they just look you in the eyes with a very empathetic smile and say, why? Now as you elaborate on why they can't do this thing, they're waiting and the real objection, not that it's just too much. Let's try this one. I don't like blue. You don't like blue? Can you elaborate on that? Well, and when they're elaborating, many times they give you an opening where you can find a way to overcome the objection. That's why we call it the feedback technique. See, if I feed back your objection, many times you'll answer it yourself. I, I, I had one situation many years ago where a person walked into a bedroom and said, you know, this bedroom's just too small. Well, I didn't fight it, and I said, John, the bedroom's smaller than you'd like. Can you elaborate on that? And now they both started talking, and guess what? They found a way to overcome their own objection because I fed it back and just got out of the way. You see the feedback? Practice it. You'll be amazed how they'll overcome their own objections, whatever it is. Just feed it back to them. The next technique is a fun one. Now, I name this technique the porcupine. Now, let me give you the definition of a porcupine. Well, first of all, you've all, I'm sure, seen porcupine. We here in Arizona have them out in the desert like crazy. The porcupine is something most of us would not want to hold. Would you agree? Say yes. Oh, I don't want to hold it. If I took a live porcupine right now and threw it in your lap, what would you do with it? Throw it back. There'd be no hesitation. Is that right? That's what a professional does with questions. They take a question and try to answer it with a question. Now, I've got to talk a lot of different situations here, because we have in this room probably 50 different vocations, careers. Some people that are in sales and marketing, some people that aren't, some people that are professionals, highly paid professionals, came to the program. You have to apply these to your situation. But the key is you have to be conscious of the technique first. Meaning, in sales, if ever a, a customer were to say, will the product do this, you don't say yes or no. They just threw what at you? A porcupine. You say, would you like the product to do that? When they say yes, they just what? Bought it. Isn't that fun? <laughs> do you have one in blue? Would you like one in blue? When they say yes, they just own a blue one. <laughs> Do you know how many of us in the sales field miss this little technique constantly? Gosh, it's beautiful. Now, one of the keys to the technique is to practice ways to make them a part of you. And so what we're going to do is, let me throw a couple porcupines at you. Ready? Could you deliver it here by the first? Would you like it delivered by the first? When you say yes, I would then, if there was any type of order form, purchase agreement, I would then write that on the form. That's a way to start writing on the form. Most people that are in the actual field of sales don't write on the form soon enough. <coughs> or they don't have a form. You know how many people in sales have the form at the office? <laughs> you need a rather long pen. <laughs> don't you? <laughs> now, watch this. Most of you have heard of, of Toastmasters, fabulous organization. A lot of people say, Tom, I want to become a trainer, a speaker. And I always say, well, you know, while you're thinking about it, go to Toastmasters. Get a feel for standing in front of a group and speaking. Do you know the one thing that Toastmasters teaches more than anything else? The ability to stand up, to relax, to consciously be thinking of what you're going to say and not get so nervous. See, a lot of us sit down or stand with a potential person we want to persuade a prospect and we get so nervous we don't even know what we're going to say. How many of you ever get nervous? <laughs> we all do. This little role play will help you get over that nervousness. Would you all just for a moment put your books right on the floor and just stand up or on your chair and just stand up for a moment. And what I'd like you to do for me, this is called a porcupine drill. This will give you a chance to learn the techniques. Now, let me give you the premise. If I ask you the question, I am in control because you're answering it and I'm leading you. If you ask me the question, you're in control, you're leading me. Let me show you an example of this. 
Uh, this young man, Scott, come on up here. He's been through the training and a true champion. Come up here for a second, Scott. If I ask Scott a question, it's like I threw a porcupine in his lap. If he answers it with, an a, que with a question, he gave it back to me. For example, I might say, Scott, where do you live? He would say, well, I live in Phoenix, Tom. Where do you live? And he gave it back. So let's try this, Scott. Scott, where do you live? I live in Phoenix, Tom. Where do you live? Well, I live in Scottsdale, which is a suburb of Phoenix. Obviously, you travel back and forth between both, don't you? I sure do. What about yourself? Yes, I spend a lot of time in both areas. Although being out of town in seminars so much, I fly constantly, and I'm not here as much as I'd like. But boy, we're having a colder than average winter, aren't we? We sure are. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot tougher up here than it is out there. The goal is to try to get to where you can answer questions with a question. And I think he did a darn good job for coming up here. We'll give him a nice hand. Thank you. Now, what I'd like you to do, and, and, and have fun with this, it's only just a quick little role play. Turn to the person next to you. Go ahead. Turn to the person next to you. And one of you ask the other one a question. The other one asks it with a question, and let's see which of the two of you can end up with the last question. Ready? Go. Have a seat. Good. You know, that little role play, that little role play, if you practice that little role play, you'd be amazed how you not only gain more confidence, but you must realize that a professional persuader has the ability to do three things at once. They literally have the ability to ask the right question, listen to the answer, while they're formulating their next question. Now, those three things have to be done simultaneously. Now, I want to start off by saying this as we talk about the actual final decision and calling for it. Many people are afraid of leading people to a decision to own a product, to maybe invest in a new home, a new car, insurance, a computer, a uh, exercise program, See, a lot of us have a tendency to be afraid to lead people to decisions. You've got to overcome that fear because if you believe in your product and it's good for them, you not only have the right to do it, you literally have the obligation to help them make the decision. See, I have a premise, and you that are in sales, I think you've got to build your business on this premise. And that premise is you never lead people to a decision unless it's truly good for who? them. See, that's where your strength has got to come into this. I know when I'm on a radio or a television interview, I'll have people call in. They'll go, well, what's the best thing to sell? What's the best product? And I always say, that which you believe in most and that which you truly believe is good for the end user, the consumer. See, if you don't like the product, if you don't believe in it, then you can't really have that strength. And believe me, I truly believe the first key to persuasion is to build it on a foundation of truth where everything you're saying is a hundred percent true. You see, a lot of people don't even like to hear the word selling. Did you know that? That's why we have done our best to teach people the art of persuasion. And the art of persuasion is in essence what? But it's applicable to all of us. Uh, I have a friend who's a, an attorney and a very good one who started using the home study course, applying the techniques, not only with his the, the, uh, client, but in front of the jury with his presentation. And he says it's fabulous. The techniques work to lead the jury to the decision that he wants. Of course, hopefully he's building it on a basis of truth as well. <laughs> you see, I don't care what you do in life. Your ability to lead people and ask the right questions is going to increase your effectiveness. But you know the major difference 
is you have to not be afraid of being rejected. See, a lot of people can't handle the fear of being told no. Say, I don't want to be rejected. I want to be received. I want to be accepted. That's why one of the first keys you have to overcome is your fear of rejection. From the time we're two years of age, what's the first word mom and dad have taught us? No. no. I said, don't do that. No. Now, if you do it again and you persist to do it, they get stronger vocally. And then many of our parents then apply a degree of pain. <laughs> I said, don't do that. No. And so a lot of us grow up thinking, I don't like being rejected. Some of you right now, I know, in, in grammar school, in high school, you might have got rejected by someone, your peers possibly. You got to overcome all that. Those are old tapes. You got to change your attitude towards the word no. You have to say, hey, I can't take rejection personally. How many of you agree with me on this? Right now, you don't know most of the people in your life who ever rejected you. Is that right? You don't know them anymore. They're gone. See, because if you're thinking of building a business, if you're thinking of going into the world as an entrepreneur, if you're thinking of sales or increasing your effectiveness, it begins as a matter of numbers. That means seeing more people, forcing yourself into uncomfortable situations where you could possibly become what? Rejected. You see, rejected. See, many of us live with this fear of rejection. A lot of us also live in conflict. How many of you want more success and happiness, but also don't want to get rejected too much? <laughs> See, we're all that way. How many of you want more out of life, but don't want to put a lot more in? <laughs> See, that's the thing we're going to talk about for a moment. I know every one of you here, and I hope all of you joining us, have a desire to achieve what we call the motivators. And you know, if you do, that's wonderful. You have a right to the motivators. And there are six motivators of the average human being. The first motivator, and you have a right to earn it, is money. Now, why is money a motivator? Money's a motivator because without it, you're not going to be real happy. Right or wrong? A lot of young people are taught that if you have money, you've done something wrong, and that's not true. I believe money should only be a scoreboard for the word service. In fact, whenever I talk about money, I always say make it the S in service. Because if you give more service, you have a right to earn more money, and that's the key to it. That's what makes it good. How many of you ever heard the saying, rich men are sick men? You ever hear that? <laughs> Insurance actuary tables have proven that those people that have some financial independence they live longer than those people that are living at poverty levels or below. True. How many of you heard this? Money can't buy everything. You ever hear that? Poverty and hunger is out of the question to purchase with money. <laughs> I hope that you that are serious about the art of persuasion and carving out a successful life and career will realize that money's got to be a scoreboard for the service you give to other people. And if it is, you have a right to earn the income. But you know what? A lot of people make money and they aren't happy. And they suddenly say, hey, that didn't make me happy. You also have to have number two, which is achievement. See? You have to be, every day, getting a feeling of achievement. I want to achieve more. Many people get the money with no achievement. Now, I have a philosophy. There's two types of people in the world. There are achievers and non-achievers. And you decide what group you want to be in. Now, if you decide you want to be a pure achiever, then you've now come into the top 5% of the people in the country. I didn't make up the figures. This is true. 5% of the people are pure achievers. 95% are non-achievers. Now, if you want to be an achiever, you've got to avoid listening to too many non-achievers because a non-achiever is achieving non-achievement. <laughs> and non-achievement is the achievement of a non-achiever. <laughs> That's why it's important you say, I'm going to surround myself with people that are positive and have a nice outlook towards life. Because if you don't, they can affect you all day. You know the third motivator? And I, I meet people in business for themselves that, that uh, use our training, is recognition. 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 We all need recognition. You need it. Your children need it. Everybody needs recognition. Make me feel important. 
One of the first goals of persuasion is to make other people feel important, make them feel good about themselves. Give recognition. In fact, I think the most powerful words in the English language, and you that are parents, I hope that in the persuasion techniques, you that start the home study course and put yourself into that whole program, I hope you'll keep saying, whenever I can, I'm going to try to catch someone today doing something right. And then I'm going to tell them about it. And you tell your children you're proud of them. They need to hear that. Recognition is so, so important. And of course, number four is security. Oh, I want security. We heard one lady, I asked what success to her, and she said, security, Tom. Security's not out here. It's in here. You're as secure as your ability to cope with insecurity. In other words, you're as secure as your ability at time to give up what you got to get what you want. I don't think anybody else can make you secure but you. A lot of people say, make me secure. I've been on the job 33 years. I hate it, but make me secure. <laughs> Look to yourself for security. Do you know if you really want security in your environment, you were only secure once in your life? And that was when you're in your mother's womb. See, in your mother's womb, you're totally secure. Yes, you were. Yes, you were. Yes, you were. <laughs> you're fed. Temperature's controlled. You don't owe anyone any money yet. <laughs> you have your own pool. Huh? <laughs> then you enter this world purple. Doctor holds you up by your little toes and starts your life with your first what? Rejection. <laughs> hey. <laughs> then they cut your umbilical cord. Bam. Doctor says, baby, you're on your own. Nah. Do you know how many people are walking through this world looking for a place to pluck it? <laughs> Back in. <laughs> uh -huh. You gotta look to yourself and your skills and your skills, you see, because you are as good as you know how to be at this moment and no better, and no better. And then, of course, number five, and this is a dangerous one, acceptance of others. Oh, I want everybody to accept me. Please, like me. I'll do whatever you say I have to do so you accept me. Do you know you can never get everyone's acceptance? There's always someone to say you can't. You can't do that, you shouldn't do that. Some of you went through that when possibly you decided to open your own business if you did at one time in your life. Some of you have got dear friends that have been so successful in the field of sales. Some of them I know when they thought about going into sales, someone in the family said, what are you, nuts? You going into selling? Feast or famine, chicken or feathers? <laughs> Sure. You know what? If you can get all five of these, and of course, love of family, which we'll put in here too, you'll love your family, you can get to this one, self-acceptance. Now, self-acceptance is when you really are happy with you, with your life, you're happy, you're fulfilled, you love people, you love life. Every day is a beautiful journey for you where you're happy. And you work at it. It doesn't just come to you. See, a lot of people say, if I had this, this would make me happy. And then I can have this, this would make me happy. You're as happy as you let yourself be. And I love what Abraham Lincoln said years ago. Most folks are as happy as they make their minds up to be. Isn't that true? Oh, yeah. See, if you're going to be self-accepted, you have to be able to sell yourself your ideas to other people. That's where the art of persuasion comes in. I talk to college students. One of my loves of my life is to talk to young college students that are getting ready to graduate. They have all the skills, but no one taught them how to market those skills. No one taught them that now you got the degree, it's time to know how to walk into an employer situation, bring down defense barriers, establish a rapport, and have that employer says, we want you to come to work for us. That's really more important at times than all the skills, because if they don't hire you, what good are the skills, you see? Have I convinced you that persuasion is OK? What do you say? Have I, have I made sure you realize that it's got to be based on a very ethical base? That you never, you never persuade anyone to do anything unless it's good for who? 
See, that's the first key. It's got to be good for them. In fact, what I'd like to do is I've given you five of the 50 strategies in the home study course. What I'd like to do is now, if you won't mind, demonstrate how all the techniques work in a persuasion sequence. Now, let me think. What could I, what could I get you to own through the art of persuasion? Let me think. How about my home study course? <laughs> and we ha happen to have it right up here. Let me show it to you first of all. This is the three-day high-intensity training system. This covers every phase of the art of persuasion and sales. This program covers time planning organization, meeting the original person for the first time, the initial contact, prospecting for new people to persuade, regardless of your business, handling objections, it costs too much, we're going to think it over, we have a friend in the business, all the things you hear. And then, of course, there are over 50 persuasion strategies. These 24 half-hour sessions, though, please, you that start the program, do me a favor. You've got to take it like an actual course. Many people get a tape and they put it on, they're doing dishes or they're driving their car. They, yeah, I'd suggest you take the workbook, go through it as if you were in class with me. Literally, if you were sat there in the three day. And always get this turned the right way. That's <laughs> important. <laughs> now, the next part of the course is, is an album on the subconscious, on self-image. This is a family album. This is for not only you, but your spouse. How to set goals, how to have a happier life. In here comes the, the blueprint for life in goal setting. <coughs> so you have to have both, the techniques, but also the attitude and the goal set. And how to get out of a slump if you're depressed. Then, of course, we have two books that are in the home study course, 300 pages of technique. Now, how many of you have ever heard anyone say to you, I want to think it over? How many of you ever heard that? Just master what's on page 233 as an example, and you'll handle that objection. Now, you have to learn the words. I don't want you reading it to them. <laughs> well, you want to think it over? Listen to this. Ah, no. <laughs> you have to learn. This book was, is, is introduced by J. Douglas Edwards, who was the father of American Selling, and one of my teachers many years ago. Also, this book is by, uh, introduced by Dr. Norman Vincent Peale. This is on emotions, on goal setting. It's 82 little chapters. There's 45 authors I give credit to in this book to changing my self-image. That's included, as well as your time planning and organization folder is included in the package. Now, let me ask you a question. How many of you in this room are seriously interested in increasing your skills, becoming more effective, and of course, also your income? Can I just see your hands? Oh, great. How many of you right now do not have this whole home study course in your own library? How many of you don't have it? How exciting. <laughs> Honestly, now, how many of you would take this whole training system home if I were to give it to you absolutely free? <laughs> oh, I'm glad you want it. How many of you would commit to 15 minutes a morning while you're getting dressed and 15 minutes an evening, a total of a half hour a day, five days a week, one year, half hour a day, if you would totally change your destiny? Can I see it? Oh, because you've got to have that much time invested. Well, if you said you'd invest the time, I guess the only reason why some of you may not take the home study course is possibly that there could be a financial investment involved. In other words, I guess we could say the real objection and the final objection might just be the money. Isn't that right? Well, you know, I'll tell you a little secret. If you were to talk to any of the major companies that market product, or if you were to do research, you would find that this program, all that you're getting in this program would retail in today's marketplace for approximately $800. Now, if you invested $800 in your future, and I gave you a written guarantee that at the end of 90 days, if you're not on your way to earning a minimum of $1,600 that next month, more than you ever have a month in your life, I'll give you my check for $1,600 and you keep the whole training system. What kind of interest return is that on your money? That's 200%, isn't it? Now, is that better than most of the banks pay? Of course it is. 
My problem is I have no way to keep in touch with all of you. So I can't make this guarantee. <laughs> Tom, <laughs> you can't make that guarantee. You have no right to ask us for $800. That's why we don't. <laughs> this entire training system today for you is available for $279. And I can look every one of you in the eyes and say that is a wise and prudent investment. See, but you can't just say, well, I'm going to get it and in two days. I'm very persuasive. I get everything I want in life. Uh-uh. Make it a year commitment. Only 15 minutes a morning to start the things into your mind so you use them all day. One year. Make a commitment, you see. Because if you'll say, I'm going to invest $23.25 per month. See, because for $23.25 per month, you have that whole training system. You couldn't see Michael Jackson for that. <laughs> Isn't that right? Oh, I'd love you to say, I'm going to make a commitment in my mind and in my education of $5.44 per week. <laughs> See, because for $5.44 a week, you have that whole training system. And I really hope today that you'll make a commitment to you, your future, and your financial growth, emotional growth, physical growth, spiritual growth, in all areas of your life, to say, I'm going to commit to 77 <laughs> cents a day. <laughs> you see, because for 77 cents a day, you have that entire training system, don't you? Yeah. But you know what? If right now you're saying, I can't afford 77 cents a day, you're the one that needs that training system. <laughs> and I had one woman say, Tommy, I went and got the training system. I've been a secretary for eight years, and I have not made any money, and I wanted to become in my own business and be more persuasive. And she says, I put it all on my husband's master charge card, and I went home, and I was all nervous, and..." I just listened to all the persuasion techniques and sat down, and, and it works beautifully. I said, darling, Christmas is six months away. Have you ever had a problem getting me something for Christmas that I really want? <laughs> See, questions? Well, yes. She says, don't spend any time on it, dear. I got my gift today. <laughs> and what's exciting with the gift I got today, I'll be able to get you a much nicer gift for Christmas. I got the entire Tom Hopkins home study course for my business, for my life, for our family. I did the right thing, <laughs> didn't I? <laughs> I hope you're ready to become persuasive. I hope you're ready to grow and achieve your goals. We're going to take a break, and after our break, we're going to show you the reasons maybe we don't do the things we should do and how we can. Let's take a quick break. Learn the art of persuasion with the complete Tom Hopkins home study course, How to Master the Art of Selling Anything. 24 separate sessions on 12 cassette tapes. Hear Tom Hopkins teach you how to be a sales champion, control with questions, handle failure and rejection, prospect for referrals, use telephone techniques, close with power, overcome objections, and much, much more. The home study course comes complete with this workbook. This sales manual alone contains the most effective training material found anywhere. This is the original program that cost over $250,000 to produce. Thousands of major corporations have paid $6,500 for the video program. Now, this complete Tom Hopkins home study course, How to Master the Art of Selling Anything, is available to you for just $279. And there's more. We'll also give you Tom Hopkins' best-selling book, How to Master the Art of Selling. With sales of over 500,000 copies, this hardcover book is a must for every sales professional's library. That's not all. You'll also get Tom Hopkins' personal success program program, the official guide to success, six cassette tapes to help you achieve your goals, learn how to increase your self-image, create new success-oriented habits, set priorities, overcome worry, break out of the chains of the past, and much more. With the six-tape album, you get a copy of My Life's Blueprint, an essential aid for proper goal setting. Plus, you'll also receive the hardcover edition of Tom Hopkins' latest book, The Official Guide to Success, and as an extra bonus, this beautiful time-planning organizer and notebook that you can use every day. All all this vital material is yours during the special TV offer for just $279 postage paid and comes complete with a 100% money-back guarantee. Keep it for 10 days. If you're not completely satisfied, return it for a full refund. Order now. Call toll-free in the continental United States, 1-800-351-9000. That's 1-800-351-9000. Except in Alaska, Hawaii, and Nebraska, dial 1-800-227-3800. Use your MasterCard, Visa, or American Express, or we'll 
ship COD. Dial now, toll free, 1-800-351-9000. Or send check or money order for $279 to Tom Hopkins, P.O. Box 26009, Phoenix, Arizona, 85068. Here's what you get. The complete Tom Hopkins home study course, How to Master the Art of Selling Anything. 12 cassette tapes and valuable workbook. Plus Tom Hopkins' best-selling hardcover book, How to Master the Art of Selling. You also get the six-tape cassette program, the official guide to success, My Life's Blueprint, and the hardcover book, The Official Guide to Success. And as an extra bonus, this time-planning organizer and notebook. All this is yours during this limited TV offer for just $279 and comes complete with a 100% money-back guarantee. Order now. Call toll-free in the continental United States, 1-800-351-9000. That's 1-800-351-9000. Except in Alaska, Hawaii, and Nebraska, dial 1-800-227-3800. Use your MasterCard, Visa, or American Express, or we'll ship COD. Dial now, toll-free, 1-800-351-9000. Or send check or money order for $279 to Tom Hopkins, P.O. Box 26009, Phoenix, Arizona, 85068. Don't wait another day. Say yes to success. Order now. Stay tuned. The climax of Tom Hopkins' exciting presentation is coming right up. Stay with us. We're CBN. Saturday, a star-filled movie double feature. You said you'd stick with me to your dying breath. Ken, I'm getting too close to it. Peter Lorre, Bob Hope, and Dorothy L'Amour in My Favorite Brunette at 8 Eastern. Then at 9.30, the Marx Brothers meet Marilyn Monroe. So men are following me. Really? I can't understand why. It's the spy spoof Love Happy. Classic comedy on the CBN Movie of the Week. Saturday, beginning at 8 Eastern on CBN Cable. Sunday, Shark Bite. And their only hope sinks to the bottom. 300 feet down there. You'll never make it. No, Elena. We can't just let him die. It's Flipper at 1 Eastern. Then at 1.30 on Gentle Ben in the city. And in the backwoods, danger awaits. Flipper and Gentle Ben. Sunday beginning at 1 Eastern on CBN Cable. I'm Fred Lewis. The talk show I do often deals with controversial subjects. Our next topic is baldness. There's a man, Bob Murphy, who claims he has a solution to hair loss and baldness. You'll see people who have used Mr. Murphy shampoo and conditioner as we learn if these products really work. Join me on Conversation with Fred Lewis as we explore the possibility of ending baldness here on this station. Sunday night, 1 o'clock Eastern. Saturday. You sound like me. Reese gets a kick out of being a millionaire's decoy. Don't you want to be my servant? No. Until the plan goes up in smoke. Because of your trickery, our price is now $200,000. Laredo, Saturday at noon Eastern on CBN Cable. We're CBN. So. Before our break, we learned that there are basically six motivators. We have a right in this country to get them all. We have a right to nice income and to make money. We have a right for a feeling of achievement, recognition, a right to, of course, get the acceptance of others, be very secure, get security, and, of course, self-acceptance. So why don't we all have these things? Why in a country of free enterprise where a person can open their own business, they can build a business, they can work up through their company to become a highly paid executive. Why do we find so few people that use the art of persuasion and get everything they want? I think the main reason is a lot of us were taught that we shouldn't or can't have some of the things that we want. How many of you were raised by parents that weren't multimillionaires? Can I just see your hand for a moment? <laughs> <laughs> Me too. Now, I only ask that because we are a product of our environment. We are a product of our environment. And if we want to change the future, we may have to analyze the environment and say, I've got to do a little changing now. See, a lot of people, when I talk about persuasion, asking questions, they go, you know, I'd just be afraid of asking people questions. Not after you get used to asking the right questions. It all becomes part of you. But you know what? I find there's four reasons why people don't fulfill their potential. They have four what I call demotivators, things that hold us back. So let's list 
the four demotivators of the average human being. The first one, and we all have it, I don't care how successful you are, everybody has some type of self-doubt. Oh, I don't know, Tom. I'm worried about that. I don't know if I should try it. I don't know if I should do it. I don't know if I can do it. We all have self-doubt. Now, the problem with self-doubt is if you don't control the things that come into your mind as far as self-doubt, they become negative convic convictions where you're convinced you can't do it. See, at first, whenever we tackle anything, we say, you know, I don't know if I can do it. Then people say, you're dumb. Why are you trying it? Now, if you listen to that, all of a sudden you go, you know what? I can do it. And I love the saying, if you say it, you own it, because if you say it, you do own it, and if you say you can't do it, you are right. <laughs> End of story. Now, how do you overcome self-doubts? Well, you, first of all, you never say, what did I do wrong? See, most people go, well, what did I do wrong? Say, what did I do right? Whenever you fail at anything, the first key to success is to cope with failure, to cope with rejection, to cope with an anxiety. And no one is without this in their life. But number two, you have to overcome two, and that's the loss of security, see? A lot of people can't cope with the fact that they may lose their security. The thought of losing security. Now, what, what is the symbol of security for your, for your physical needs? Money. Some people are so afraid of investing their money that they never make any money, see? If you always try to keep what you've got, that may be all you'll get. That's why at times you've got to say, to make money, I've got to spend money. See, most people don't realize that. Many of you right here, many of you joining us, you work for large companies. You're just like your company. You as a person want to grow, you've got to invest in yourself, invest in your business, invest in your mind, the greatest investment on earth. Then, of course, you have to work on this one, fear of failure. See, we all have to cope with fear of failure. I don't know, Tom. I'm all kind of afraid I'm going to fail. You know the first time I spoke or stood in front of a group like this, I was in the second grade? That's right. I starred in the school play. You've all seen it, I'm sure. Sleeping Beauty. <laughs> no, I was Prince Charming. And I walked out on a stage with 50 adults. And I was there in my purple cape, my velvet pants, my silver turned up shoes. And I had a line or two to deliver to the audience. And I walked out on that stage and saw my dad and mom sitting there and looked for the first time. See, a lot of you don't know what it's like to stand up here and look out into faces. I went into complete shock. <laughs> I just stood there. I looked down, my dad's going, talk. <laughs> Finally, they just walked out and led me off. <laughs> You know, I said I'd never do that again. I had such a fear of speaking in front of a group. I had such a fear that I might say the wrong words. And in school, uh, my mom even had to go and talk to the, to the teachers and say, if you call, let Tom know you're going to call him the next day. He doesn't sleep. He's got some real problems. And I was asked my first time to do what I'm doing with you today. Uh, I guess this is about 12, 18, 19 years ago. And I said I wasn't going to do it. I said, I can't. And a man gave me some words I've tried to live by, and I want to give them to you, and I hope you'll try to live by these words. Do what you fear most, and you control fear. See, if you do what you fear most, you are now in control of the fear. Where if you don't do what you're afraid of, you're not only living in fear, but you'll never accomplish your goals because you'll always get started and then stop because you're so afraid you're going to fail, you're not going to try, you see. And then, of course, we all have to work on number four. Number four, pain in change. See, pain in change. Oh, I don't want to change, Tom. See, if you don't want to change, then don't be frustrated with the person you are now. You got to just say, I'm me, I'm happy with me, I don't want anymore, and I'm okay. That's good, too. See, as long as you're happy, then you don't need to go through change. But if you're not happy, you have to say, hey, time for me to consider some change. Now, I'll tell you a secret about pain and change. The pain is forgotten when the change takes place and you get all the benefits because you put up with the pain to change. You forget the pain. It's like losing 40 pounds. What are you going through to lose 40 pounds? Some pain. Until you lose it and that seal-like body is slithering down the street. 
And your friends go, whoa, you look great. And you go, I know nothing to it. <laughs> you don't tell them, say, you should have seen me. I have my elbows tied behind my back so I wouldn't eat. No, you see? <laughs> it's true of everything. Uh, Dr. Robert Schuller has some beautiful words, and I love them. No pain, no gain. Isn't that true? And, and you know, this one here is the one that holds a lot of us back because we live old tapes. I've always had these doubts. I can't be maybe the success I want to be, and I don't want to give up what I got to get what I want. And I'm afraid I might fail, so I'm not sure I'm going to try, and so I'm not going to change. And now we have that circle. But if you can overcome these and you go after the motivators, you can really grow. See, the problem is, what, what does it really cause when you want both of these? Remember, you want the, you want the motivators, and you want the de you, and you keep living the demotivators. What's it cause? Watch this. What would this cause? I want to climb to the pinnacle of success, and I want to stay home most of the time. <laughs> What's that cause, huh? Conflict. See, most people in this world live in conflict. I want this, but I don't want this. I want that. Conflict is the first step of getting depressed because then you get frustrated. See, I'm frustrated. They're holding me back. Now, once you get frustrated, the anxiety starts to increase. And I have fun with my, my training. I hope you'll have fun with it, too. That, see, when you, when you get yourself into that uptight position, like, like say you've got a problem with your children, you've got a problem with your employer, your, your boss. There are people in your life, by the way, that you want to persuade, and, and, and you really don't even want to be around them. <laughs> How many of you have children that you love <laughs> and also dislike at times? How many of you have a customer that you do business with that you really would like to never see again? <laughs> see, you don't like everybody. You have to have a love for people. You have to love people, and when you start to go in conflict, you gotta say, hey, wait a second. I, my goals aren't set, and I'm in conflict. See, here's what happens when you go into conflict. You want the motivators and the demotivators. Here's what happens to you. See, I draw this little, we'll make this little rectangle here. See, comfort zone, danger zone. See, you start off normally every day, if you had a good night's sleep and no deep set emotional problems that need psychiatric assistance, you usually start off and you are in your comfort zone. Every time you get rejected or have any problem, the emotions can go into the danger zone. Now when you go into the danger zone, if you don't handle the anxiety, you'll be motivated to either withdraw or get hostile. Now I'd like you to all say the words, ready? You start off normally, any new job, any new venture, any new day, and you're feeling good, you're in your... Every pain or rejection or obstacle, if you don't look at it properly, can cause you to go into your... Now, when you're in your danger zone, if you don't handle it properly, you'll be motivated to do one of two things, either... Or get... Now, if many of the people you meet, you that are in sales, you meet one of your customers, they know what you're there for. They immediately go from there into there, and they want to do what with you? Surprise. Or some of them just get? Surprise. Now, if they get? Surprise. You're tempted to want to? Surprise. Because now you're in your? Zone. Then you go home and get? Surprise. And now your spouse? Surprise. And you have no fun. <laughs> <laughs> so the first key is to work to keep your emotions in your comfort zone. Now, you know how you do that is by saying certain things. You see, I believe in self-talk. I believe in talking to yourself. And I'd like to just have you practice these little things. I call them the five attitudes towards failure. And whenever you fail at anything, why don't you just say to yourself, I never see failure as failure, but only as a learning experience. You see, your first year in business is a learning experience. Every failure you've ever had in your life, instead of getting you depressed, will motivate you to the top as long as you say it's just another learning experience. Thomas Edison had 10,000 written experiments before inventing the light bulb. And you know his peers, when he heard about his written experiments, they said, Mr. Edison, how did you feel failing 10,000 times? He said, I didn't fail 10,000 times. I only learned 10,000 ways <laughs> that it wouldn't work. <laughs> you see, attitude. Every time you fail, say, hey, I'm not going to get depressed. Like, down, lighten up. I never see failure as failure, but only as the negative feedback I need to change course in my direction. See, that's all rejection is, negative feedback. You need to change course in your direction. 
How many of you want to stay young, healthy, and happy, and live a long, enjoyable life? Can I see your hands? That's a loaded question, isn't it? If you really want that, I want you to really live with this third little attitude. I never see failure as failure, but only as an opportunity to develop my sense of humor. See, if ever you fail and you look at it as a chance to laugh, you can be in stitches most of the time. <laughs> and you know, laughter is good for you. Don't stop laughing. Too many people take this whole thing too seriously. Just like right now. Right now we're sitting in this room. And here we are, we're all serious. This is a very important session. And you're joining us, and this is very important, of course. But you know, I always, I always say to myself, hey, here we are having this seminar, and here this is also important, and at this moment, there are over one billion Chinese that don't even know we had this session. <laughs> Doesn't that put it in the proper perspective? Don't take things so serious. Whenever you fail, say, hey, an opportunity to develop my sense of humor. See, some of you have something hurt you, and you're down for a couple weeks. Then you start telling friends and relatives, and then what do you do? Laugh. Laugh sooner. <laughs> Laughter is so good for you, keep laughing. And of course, the next one is something that you have to say whenever you fail at anything. Whenever you fail at anything, I never see failure as failure, but only as an opportunity to practice my techniques and perfect my performance. That's all anything is, a chance to practice your techniques. Now, you that are in sales, you must practice on qualified people. See, brain surgeons don't get this chance. <laughs> brain surgeons get no chance to practice. Can you imagine that? They're three weeks in school, and they show up in their outfit. I am new. <laughs> <laughs> Bring them in. <laughs> You're my first. <laughs> what would happen? to the brain surgeon that lost his first five persuasion chances. <laughs> what else might he lose? A little confidence? <laughs> Referrals? <laughs> sure. And of course, I, I think we'd all enjoy life more if we'd lighten up and say, I never see failure as failure, but only as a game I must play to win. Because that's all life is. It's one big fun game. You gotta be willing to play. You're gonna have days you're gonna get hurt. You're gonna have days you try to persuade your children on something. You, you that uh, start the home study course, you're gonna say, I'm gonna learn that technique today, and I'm gonna go out and persuade that person. And all of a sudden, you'll try it, and they'll reject you. And you say, well, that didn't work, and now I get down. You gotta stop and say, uh-uh. When we founded the company over 10 years ago, we had a creed that I'd like you to make part of your family. It goes like this. I'm not judged by the number of times I fail, but by the number of times I succeed. And the number of times I succeed is in direct proportion to the number of times I can fail and keep trying. Because see, that's the essence. How many times can you keep trying? And you know, every one of you I know, and all of you I'm sure, have had opportunities where you failed at things. I was six months in the field of sales, and I made no money because I had no training. I was depressed. Luckily, I went and sought out training and took eight years of full-time applying the techniques until I decided to teach them, you see. But I have a woman in the room that I want to have you meet. This lady was awarded every year uh, in the 40 states we train in and, and five countries. We choose one person that we call the champion of the year. And she is here. Uh, she's not only a dear friend, but when I met her at a seminar like this, she was working for a, a hotel chain, and she had reached her early 60s, and they were telling her that she had to retire. And she, she was working at the hotel while I was doing a seminar, and she kept popping in and out of the room. And finally, I, I asked at the end of the session who she was. And she walked up to me. She said, Mr. Hopkins, my name is Gertrude Nunn, and I, I'm thinking of going into to, to sales. And uh, long story short, uh, that was one of the first times I'd ever spoke to a group that day. And that today, as she approaches her 78th birthday, not only is she a senior vice president for Merrill Lynch, but she earned $100,000 every year that she was actively in sales. And she's the highest paid great-grandmother we can find. 
She doesn't do it for the money. She loves people, and I think she's one of the most delightful people I've ever met. I want you to see someone that lives what we're here and what we're teaching, and she has lived with the home study course, and that's Gertrude Nunn. Would you give her a nice hand? Gertrude, come up here. How are you? Fabulous. Gertrude, just, just tell them a little bit about, you know, your success, good fortune, and more important, your attitude and everything. Do that. Okay. First of all, I want to thank you for letting me come. This is wonderful to see all the champions here and to see so many happy, smiling faces. I went into real estate and, well, I was an old lady, and I met this young man. And I was really trying to decide, should I go into real estate? And I listened to him, and I thought, you know, if that young kid can do that, <laughs> I surely can. <laughs> I listened to Tommy Hopkins, and I owe him all of my success. No, you did it. He is so great. <clears throat> I did it, but you were the reason. You know, when you go home today, and after you've heard this course, you should study, and the whole key is to go out and do what you've heard Tommy say. I did that. Okay. Isn't she wonderful? Thank you. Mm. Ah. <laughs> you see, I guess what I really want you all to realize is everyone in the world can use the art of persuasion. If you haven't gotten a raise, if you're on a job and someone else is promoted ahead of you, I'd like you to ask yourself, was it because they had their ability to sell themselves and thus get what they want? Many of us see someone have a wonderful thing happen and we have a tendency to say it was just luck. I've tried my best to take luck out of the science of persuasion. Those people that achieve most in life know exactly where they're going and how they're going to get there. And they do practice and drill and rehearse the techniques. You see, Benjamin Franklin said it this way years ago. Empty the coins in your purse into your mind, and your mind will fill your purse with coins. And that is very, very true. And as you leave and as you decide if you're going to start the entire home study course, I hope you realize it's one step at a time. Life is one step at a time. Success and happiness is a constant search. But as you go for it, do me a favor. Get it emotionally, physically, financially, spiritually. Get it in all areas of your life. And if you do that, you'll not only be successful, because see, I have a little philosophy. Success is getting what you want, but happiness is wanting what you get. And that's what's so important as you continue your journey. I thank all of you for joining me live. I thank you that have been with us, and I wish you the courage to turn your dreams into realities and unleash your untapped potential. Thank you. These people are attending one of Tom Hopkins' three-day sales training seminars. Does it really work? Here's what some Tom Hopkins graduates say. I've been through Tom's um, material about three years ago. It's helped me to get my income on a regular basis to over $100,000 a year. I have more than quadrupled my income in the past 18 months. I have gone from driving a subcompact automobile to being driven around in a limousine. This course has been absolutely exceptional and more than I ever anticipated. And I got an awful lot out of it, even after being 12 years in the business. Well, in the last eight years, after having a Rolls Royce, a couple of Mercedes, a couple of Cadillacs, that I would definitely have to say that uh, Tom Hopkins material works. It's now mandatory for the company that my wife and my cell phone, all of our salespeople must attend the training. It's just a fact of life now. It has to be done. More and more people are turning to Tom Hopkins as a motivator, as a skills program, and they are using it successfully. Over 600 people are present here at Tom Hopkins' high-intensity sales training session in Scottsdale, Arizona. Coming from across the nation and around the world, many paid as much as $3,000 on travel, expenses, and tuition to attend this incredible seminar. And it's worth it. But now, for the first time, you can learn the same thing right in the comfort of your home and at a price you can afford. Listen.
Learn the art of persuasion with the complete Tom Hopkins home study course, How to Master the Art of Selling Anything. 24 separate sessions on 12 cassette tapes. Here, Tom Hopkins teach you how to be a sales champion, control with questions, handle failure and rejection, prospect for referrals, use telephone techniques, close with power, overcome objections, and much, much more. The home study course comes complete with this workbook. This sales manual alone contains the most effective training material found anywhere. This is the original program that cost over $250,000 to produce. Thousands of major corporations have paid $6,500 for the video program. Now, this complete Tom Hopkins home study course, How to Master the Art of Selling Anything, is available to you for just $279. And there's more. We'll also give you Tom Hopkins' best-selling book, How to Master the Art of Selling. With sales of over 500,000 copies, this hardcover book is a must for every sales professional's library. That's not all. You'll also get Tom Hopkins' personal success program program, the official guide to success, six cassette tapes to help you achieve your goals, learn how to increase your self-image, create new success-oriented habits, set priorities, overcome worry, break out of the chains of the past, and much more. With the six-tape album, you get a copy of My Life's Blueprint, an essential aid for proper goal setting. Plus, you'll also receive the hardcover edition of Tom Hopkins' latest book, The Official Guide to Success, and as an extra bonus, this beautiful time planning organizer and notebook that you can use every day. All all this vital material is yours during the special TV offer for just $279 postage paid and comes complete with a 100% money-back guarantee. Keep it for 10 days. If you're not completely satisfied, return it for a full refund. Order now. Call toll-free in the continental United States, 1-800-351-9000. That's 1-800-351-9000. Except in Alaska, Hawaii, and Nebraska, dial 1-800-227-3800. Use your MasterCard, Visa, or American Express, or we'll ship COD. Dial now, toll free, 1-800-351-9000, or send check or money order for $279 to Tom Hopkins, P.O. Box 26009, Phoenix, Arizona, 85068. Here's what you get. The complete Tom Hopkins Home Study Course, How to Master the Art of Selling Anything, 12 cassette tapes and valuable workbook, plus Tom Hopkins best-selling hardcover book, How to Master the Art of Selling. You also get the six-tape cassette program, the official guide to success, My Life's Blueprint, and the hardcover book, The Official Guide to Success, and as an extra bonus, this time planning organizer and notebook. All this is yours during this limited TV offer for just $279 and comes complete with a 100% money-back guarantee. Order now. Call toll-free in the continental United States, 1-800-351-9000. That's 1-800-351-9000. Except in Alaska, Hawaii, and Nebraska, dial 1-800-227-3800. Use your MasterCard, Visa, or American Express, or we'll ship COD. Dial now, toll-free, 1-800-351-9000. Or send check or money order for $279 to Tom Hopkins, P.O. Box 26009, Phoenix, Arizona, 85068. Don't wait another day. Say yes to success. Order now. Friday, we've got a squeezable, homey show for y'all. What do you mean, Dad? Well, first, we've got some comfy fashions for entertaining at home. That sounds great. Also, America's best-known squeezer, Mr. Whipple, actor uh... Dick Wilson, and his wife, Meg. And they're going to join us to share some of their favorite recipes. Yeah, I get it. <laughs> I hope so. You get together with us this week on... Together with Shirley and Pat Boone. Friday morning at 9.30 Eastern on CBN Cable. The comedies are here on the CBN Movie of the Week. Bob Hope and Dorothy L'Amour star in the hilarious mystery, My Favorite Brunette. Immediately followed by Marilyn Monroe and Harpo Marx in the delightful comedy, Love Happy, both on April 13th. Then Jane Powell and Cliff Robertson star in the romantic comedy, The Girl Most Likely, April 20th. These are just some of the great movies coming soon on the CBN Movie of the Week, every Saturday night at 8 Eastern on CBN.